Hello, everyone. I'm Rob Goodwin of YourBostonSports.com. It's May 3rd, 2020, and we will be getting to baseball a little bit, but the order of the day, obviously, is what the country's going through with this pandemic. I've got a, three other guests with me today, not all Red Sox, so I'll just then, uh, introduce my uh, longtime co-host, John Korn. How are you? Good. How are you? How's everybody? Good, good. Yeah. Uh, from Washington, D.C., Steve Dresner. Thanks for having me. Uh, New York Mets hey, fan. Steve. New York Mets, and uh, from Torrington, Connecticut, Mike Baker, representing Yankee Nation. How's it going? Mets Happy Yankees to be here. Sox. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, you know, with this situation, um, you know, so many, you know, people to think about um, who are serving, serving the public, both, you know, the hospital workers, everyone medical, people that are in the, the you know, I think about the people that are in the, um, in the food chain, you know, from beginning to end, um, sacrificing so much to do their jobs and, um, you know, really serving us and, and those that have lost loved ones, those that are, those that are ill. I think this is probably the, the to me, the, well, it, not probably, this is the, the biggest domestic challenge in my lifetime. Oh, and I know that, that you guys have been touched um, in one way or another by this. So um, I know, John, you have a couple of relatives in the healthcare field. Do you, have, do you have any kind of feel for them of what they're telling you, what they've been telling you? It's been about a month, I think, since you and I got together. Well, my, I got a sister that's a nurse, but she works in critical care, you know, the, 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 like the guy that breaks his neck. And they're, they're, per, they're permanently in the place. It's a, the part of Monsanto. So she doesn't get a lot of in and out stuff. But, uh, yeah, evidently the help, the help they're, the, they're the new uh, – we talk about the, the people that stormed uh, Omaha Beach and uh, D-Day. Some of these health care workers in New York – are made out of the same thing, as far as I'm concerned. I mean, it's incredible, it's incredible, incredible sort of, what they've done. They're they're and they're at risk. Yeah, you know, as are people working in stores exactly. and everything. And then yeah, the girl um, behind the check in the checkout line at the grocery store. You know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I thought there was one other person in your family. I mean, I know your brothers. Your brothers is, is continue to work. I imagine. I have a niece that's in nursing school. You know, they had to suspend all the um, part part of the thing. They they go. What do they call it? They go in and they work in the hospitals and stuff. Sure. They had to. They had to yeah. suspend. I don't know why. You think that you, they would do just the opposite, get some more help in there? You know, but yeah. I think they're trying. And they, I know you've got a couple of friends that you're unable to visit because uh, they're 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 in lockdowns. So. Yeah, a buddy of mine's in. Uh, he's he's in uh, um, um, up at St. Joe's up in uh, Enfield. He uh, they got they got they got him locked down to the second floor. You know, they're, they're quarantined, but nobody nobody's gotten sick in there, so it's working. Wow. But social separation is. Yeah, you know, I think that's what's so scary about this. You got the smartest people on the planet Earth going, wash your hands, stay six <laughs> feet away from you. That's the only. You want somebody to come come along and fix it. And that's the only answer, social separation. It's, kind of, it's, almost, it's, it's the answer. It's the easiest. Yeah, it's, what, do, it's what we can all do, right? Scary, you know? Yeah. <laughs> you know? And Mike, you had a little bit of a scare with COVID-19 for a little bit? Uh, well, my son, uh, his wife works uh, for the state, mm -hmm. and she does social work. So there was a possibility of uh, her being in contact uh, with an infected person, as it turned out. That lady uh, was not infected, but as uh, as a precaution, out of an abundance of ca caution, we quarantined here at home because uh, my daughter uh, was in contact with my son and my daughter-in-law, and so we we played it on the we played it on the safe side. Sure, sure. But other than that, uh, fortunately, uh, everyone's got their health. Uh, no one's lost a job yet. Uh, it hasn't had a direct impact other than following the recommended guidelines, you know, face covering, social distancing, that sort of thing. Uh, so far, so good. But, uh, you know, it sounds like uh, this could be a part of our life for another year, year and a half. So we just have to stay diligent. Yeah. Yeah. Well, hopefully economically we'll be getting back on our feet a little bit. Yeah. You know, yeah. And Steve Dreser, you're down in uh, Washington, DC, uh, traffic and, sports and other stuff for WTOP. What, what have you seen in the, in the public that we may not know about? Well, my daughter about three weeks ago had to go to the hospital for kidney stones and she's only 19. 
And I, I, I think um, when, when you live through the example of even coming near a hospital or dealing with medical issues or something, it does put it in perspective because she had to go by ambulance. And, and uh, you know, as one of the attendants said to me, um, you may just want to stay home because you can't get within 50 feet of a lobby entrance of a hospital, which is true. Now, great thing, she's 19 and 19 year olds have their phones on like when, you know, we were growing up or when we were in college and everything, we were looking for a dime to use the pay phone. <laughs> um, and then in the evening, she would group text, you know, how she's doing in the, cat, you know, CAT scan results and everything. But, you know, just a, a, an incident like that to go through and to see in a hospital, we were at that same hospital a couple of weeks before getting her a um, gastro procedure. And, you know, you go back, you go up to the second floor to radiology, everything's great. But now the same hospital, I didn't even get out of my car in the parking lot because I couldn't even get anywhere near. Uh, and then of course that trickles down to whether people believe you or not, the doctors in the ER say no quarantine necessary, nothing. Um, you know, I, I was doing my work from home uh, for about three weeks, uh, you know, despite what people thought. So, you know, this this whole matter goes off in so many directions, has so many tentacles in life, whether it's sports or everyday living, of course. I think it's going to be with us two, three years, maybe longer on, on, on every single front, financial, the way we do things, the way we shop. So I think it's going to be around a long time. Yeah, you know, you see all the people that are that are in in TV and and broadcast, working from home, and um, and I know you you've been doing this you said for three weeks. You do the same thing, and you know that that was unheard of. Like you you would never be sitting at home, broadcasting on WTOP up until this time, but then, a, you know, a switch flipped on, and it seems like everyone can can pretty much make do at least part-time at home and do that. It, that must be a change for your industry. Well, as you and I have always talked about, as I've always said, I think this whole incident with the COVID-19 virus is kind of leapfrogged us five years, maybe 10 years down the line for, you, you know, Mike's job, for, for uh, John's job and, and your job as well is, Coming out of this, if there is such a thing, it's going to show own business owners and uh, everyday people who are responsible for companies, finances, what have you. We we really pushed up the timetable on on what you could get away with, so to speak. Mm -hmm. Smaller office space, having half your workforce work from home. I, I mean, Mike, can you ever imagine being home like two weeks out of a month? Uh, because we now found out we, you can do your job from home. I, I, I just think that this also sped life up and, and certain things are, are gonna be affected here that we were not expecting this early in life. I agree. Uh, you know, there's been events such as uh, world wars, uh, the Apollo program that have sped life up in what, you know, many ways. So this is probably another one of those uh, life changing events, life changing occurrences that is going to lead to, you know, as you said, uh, leapfrogging years ahead of where we imagine that we would be and society itself is, is going to. I guess we lost Mike for a second there. Interconnected everything and everyone is. Eventually, food service, uh, everything is just so interconnected. It's, you take it all for granted. Yeah, and John, Until you something and I, like this happens. And Corn, you and I have talked. I mean, you know, your job modernizing to the point where you could be at home a good part of the time makes so much sense. And I, you know, I, do you think this will accelerate that process for you? A little bit, not not as much as you guys are, are uh, yeah, in my, my particular situation, a little, a little bit, but I still need to, I'm, I'm probably, I'm probably working about 10 hours a week uh, from home. I need to get out there into the, into the land records and stuff, but uh, yeah, I can see, I can see some of that. Um, I'm, I, well, I despise that term. This is the new normal. I don't, I don't like new normal. I want to see the, you know. I want to, I want to see uh, Fenway Park Yankee Stadium full of people again someday you know what I mean yeah. I don't I don't want I don't want a new normal I want to 
I want the old normal. So well, it's almost like I'm, I'm, living... I'm hoping and praying for that. You know. Yeah. But yeah, I, as far as technology, I think we have leapfrog a little bit into the future. Yeah. And I would think you know I would think companies and and, and state governments would be worried that this is going to happen again. What do we do? You know, if this is over in a year and everyone's been vaccinated, right? I think viruses disappear. happen again. I, historically, you know? the viruses disappear. They vanish in the thin air sometimes. Yeah. And I, I don't I don't know why everybody believes this is absolutely going to come back. I don't know how, the, I don't know where well, they, you have to kind of it could, worse. it may, it may come back worse than it yeah. ever did, but yeah, it, it may not. I mean, I, I don't, I don't know. You know, what we, about the, the environment? We don't know. Effects. That's, that's the scary part. We don't know what's going to happen. Yeah. Well, yeah. Any guys have a thoughts on the environmental effects? I mean, the air is clean. It's probably, well, I think it's known the air is cleaner. The waters are cleaner because we're just not out. Mm. But what does that, does that give kind of, um, you know, the environmental standard well, think, where you can say we can do things to make that happen when life is relative is back to quote unquote normal. I think we're going to learn a lot. I think we have already learned a lot about all this, but I, I think it's, it's kind of a piece of the, a, a pie deal. I think there's a percentage we've learned about how to deal with uh, viruses and, and illnesses as a whole. But I think we're also learning uh, how to uh, how to kind of break down information. I mean, today uh, there was kind of a breakdown report about, and finally, uh, so, uh, I think it was CNN finally broke this down. So, in the meatpacking industry, can the virus be transmitted through food or meats and so on? And the general answer is no, for a couple of reasons. But I also think that we were ill-prepared across the board, regardless of what was talked about by Bill Gates in 2014 or uh, Barack Obama and so on. But the bottom line is we were ill-prepared on shipping, receiving goods and services, I mean, up and down the board. But, but as far as basic survival is concerned, um, you know, just like the CNN report said today, number one, there's really no evidence and it can be transmitted through food. Let's, let's beef it up to the next step. Well, the person who handled the vacuum packaging, let's just suppose they coughed or something. Well, the virus may get on something, but it cannot really last on plastic or any hard substance for more than two to three days. Mm -hmm. It'll take that long to get to your store. So the bottom line is, is, is that, you know, affecting environment in, in food and every day, I, I think that's a little bit on the back burner, but, uh, you know, we need to, of course, perfect having it affect uh, the human body. And that's where, as we all know, everything has fallen short. Right, right. Do you think we're a little bit, um, how do I say this? There's things going on other than this virus in this world, you know, and, um, I heard the term that the cure could be worse than the disease. Uh, my mom, uh, a week from Thursday, she's going to have like an angio, what do you call it? An angio thing where you, you, they, 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 there's a little blockage there and you're, she's going to go, she, she, she would have normally gone last month. And I got another friend of mine who said he has uh, prostate cancer. He's going to get, get uh, June 1st. Uh, uh, the, he got diagnosed like in February, you know, and these things have been moved up. And I'm thinking if you have 10 million people in these situations, okay, that didn't get treated, or the guy that didn't get a biopsy last month, but he's going to get one next month, st stuff like that. I mean, you know, the cure can be worse than the disease. I mean, we, we have st other stuff going on. We got we, we to gotta open the country up, and um, th there's other things going on besides the virus. You know? right. I mean, are are 80,000 people going to die next year because they weren't treated quick enough this year? Yeah, and, you know, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I'm kind, of, I'm kind of, you know, from an economic standpoint, you know, no customers, we're, we're done. You know, we have to yeah. find a way to, to and, and I don't know, you know, if, if it's open everything like Georgia or, or stage it like, like in, here in Connecticut, it starts May 20th, you know, so outdoor yeah. restaurants, nail salons and hair, that kind of thing. Um, but, you know, I think we, we, we have to kind of find a way to do it. And, he, and I think yeah. it, it's got to be done state by state. You can't do it nationally. But I think John brings up a very good point, and and you know, there's if there's any type of silver lining to to read into what everyone's going through, 
I, I don't know if you guys agree, but I also think that this it has put a huge spotlight and exposed the medical industry, of course, not for the people, but for the system. And of course, with all the Capitol Hill politics down here and so on, and, and just the last 20 years, as far as medical insurance, the whole 10 yards, I'm starting to come over to the side where there's a good thing here that the medical industry has been kind of exposed to what needs to be fixed. So if there's any good to come out of all this, that may be one factor. And, and you know, it may have taken something as drastic as this to produce some good. Yeah, I mean, there have to be changes. Because like you said, we learn, we, we're learning, better for worse, we're learning a lot of things here. But I think the media has to uh, uh, get a little bit, you know, I mean, they're, they're showing all these protesters and, you know, making them out to be. Most of these protesters are, are guys that have lost small business. They're done and they're frustrated. That's what, that's what 90% of them are. You know, they forget, to, they forget to add that fact in, you know. And, uh, you know, like you said, we got, we got to figure out a way to open up. I know how to stay six feet away from somebody. I don't need, I don't need the governor of Connecticut to tell me how to do it. And, and uh, you know, it, it, it does get frustrating after a while. You know, just the country belongs to the Americans. And the government does have a right in a crisis to step in and temporarily suspend your rights. Absolutely. But there's a point where, okay, we got we, we to start, we start reversing this here. And I guess Georgia's the big guinea pig here. If, if there's no spike in Georgia, maybe the other ones will feel more confident. But yeah, see what happens, you know? And the numbers, the numbers are, are we don't we don't know how accurate they are. You know, they said yeah. a thousand people were were, came, were positive in Georgia yesterday, but that's because there was more testing, not right. necessarily because they opened the state. Yeah, I, you know, no, it, just, I, I, the I, testing hasn't caught up yet. And yeah. um, I mean, as of yesterday, the CDC said there was somewhere in the area of a million ninety or so uh, known cases, with almost sixty five thousand uh, deaths. Um, that's what we know about. Um, but again, because we haven't had the widespread testing, we just don't know all the true numbers. Well, and, and then, yeah, yeah, and someone found a CDC table just, I think, as of a couple of days ago that said they revised the numbers of, of people who passed away downward because they died of something else. But I... <laughs> you're gonna you're, that, you know? you're you're gonna you'll probably see that swing in both directions because uh, the yeah. other day a few days ago they they referenced a woman who died out in california back in early february who the, was originally supposed to have died of a heart attack as it as it turned out uh her heart was uh, ravaged by covid 19 so mm. yeah you'll you'll probably see the numbers we'll never know for sure um but as you start seeing states gradually start reopening, and I saw where Colorado is starting to follow suit, I think there's seven Republican governors and two Democratic governors are starting. So, um, yeah, to your point, Rob, we definitely need to open the economy, and I think it's going to happen on a step-by-step -step basis. It's because we're in uncharted waters, we have to do it carefully. Uh, and what John said about the cure being worse than the disease. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we don't want the cure to be worse than the disease, but there's got to be a middle ground somewhere. So I yeah. think the safe, safe bet is to do it incrementally. Uh, and, and even on, at, at the state level to do it incrementally within the state as well, you know? So, uh, well, a question, I definitely think, uh, you know, in the next month or so, and I'm certainly not an expert, but it's just the gut. Yeah, the gut leads you to think that things are going to start opening up and mm -hmm. common sense will prevail and what makes sense will prevail, I think. Right. I mean, the grocery store model, you know, you, you let a certain number of people in, right. You know, and that way you, you can, you know, cause you know, compared to, to a month ago, I can tell you that there's a huge difference in the, in, you know, in the grocery store, as far as, you know, the volume of people, it makes it easier to social distance than it, than it was a month right. ago. Yeah. Exactly. You know, a huge exactly. difference. You know? well, if you're elderly or you have something wrong with you, you stay home. I mean, you have to. Right. You know, that's, that's common sense. Sense. Common you sense plays a huge exactly. part in all of this. You know, it, it plays a huge role in this. Yeah. Opening up you know? now is great, meaning stores, restaurants. I, I, I mean, you could sit every two mm. seats in theaters. 
all of that is fine. We're mm -hmm. going to come back to, I'm sure you guys will agree in some shape or form. We're going to circle back to controversy. The first minute you hear of um, any type of NFL game, in this case, probably baseball, I, I don't think it's realistic to expect hockey or the NBA back at all for the remaining of the year. But let's just say baseball. The controversy is going to come up is that are we at the right time to even sit four seats apart in a baseball game? Mm -hmm. yeah. And, right. you, you know, I, unfortunately, we're going to have to get used to the way things look now as of right this minute. Um, the NFL would probably open up on time. Uh, they could, as you probably read today, uh, an article talking about if the NC 2A football season doesn't start on time, the NFL wants to also play Saturday games. Hey, great. But the bottom line is, is that I, I, I would almost state the, the whole, as they say, the whole bank on the fact that at least September and October, you are going to have NFL football with no gate, no fans, nothing. And then it's left to the broadcasters and so on to be creative, to bring yeah. it to you, bring every mm -hmm. facet to you of the game. And now you're up to November and, and then you're going to have the people on Capitol Hill say, um, Oh, wait a minute. We're told in the winter, we're going to have round two of this whole virus thing. So it, it's, um, you know, I, I think we'll be okay on the initial open people returning to work. But look out when we start really getting into the meat when sports returns and so on. Concerts, the stuff of like opinions that. Are going to be, and you guys know, there's going to be a lot of different schools of thought here uh, about whether to let fans in or not. You think we're going to have baseball? I they think we will have a baseball season. It will start like July 1st. But, John, I don't think we're going to have any fans. I really don't. I think, uh, you know, the bottom line is um, they want to get it in. No one wants to lose money. It's going to be as crazy, wild structure as any of, it, any of us would think of it. Um, you, you, again, as you guys probably heard, you're, you're going to have maybe eight teams from Toronto, the Mets, the Pirates, the Red Sox, Yankees, okay. Nationals, mm. uh, playing a regional division. I, I mean, it's yeah. nothing about it. It's going to mm. be normal. But you want to know something. Right. I'm sure you guys will agree. Even watching it on TV is going to be such a thrill. Yep. Sure. I can't wait. And, and, you know, it's mm. not for debate right now, but I've always liked interleague play. But as long as you – which some people don't do this. As long as you keep in back of your mind, it's just pretty cool. They've even started playing mm -hmm. when they do. You know what? Who who cares what division, who, what, where, when? Right, right. And they're, I mean, they were talking about, you know, seven inning double headers. You know, I think they should make it like we were kids. Everybody bats, you know, one to 25. Well, well bats. you know, you're getting now too specific. I, <laughs> I, I mean, you know, just it, you, the, the, the rules are going to be crazy. True. The, the divisions are going to be crazy. I, my opinion, my, my only line of it is if you don't like it, save it until the end. If you want to go and have a debate about whoever wins the World Series this coming year, whether it should be an asterisk, asterisk next to the team name, great. Save it until the end of the year. But just by the mere fact, I, again, I, as John said, I, I think we're looking at July 1st to realistically start up baseball. I don't think we're getting NBA. I definitely don't think we're getting hockey. NCAA football, I'm not sure there's going to be a season. Uh, I'm not sure about that. The, the NCAA, as you know, is a mighty powerful organization. But there comes the NFL swooping in, uh, trying to say, okay, clear the way. We're ready to go. Um, I also don't think uh, there'll be football in Las Vegas this year. I think actually um, – the Raiders are going to play one year, and I'm old school, at Jack Murphy Stadium in San Diego. I think they're going down there for a year because the way it looks now, um, that Las Vegas Stadium isn't ready yet. So um, it'll be an interesting next six months. 
Well, with, I mean, with, with uh, NCAA football, how do you quarantine students if, if they're back, if they're back on campus? How do you quarantine? It's, it's, it's right. not that way. I, I, I will tell you this. I don't think the NCAA or the institutions will even let it get that far because right now, look, right now we're talking about schools canceling their fall semesters and mm -hmm. having it virtual. It starts there. If that's the case, there isn't going to be any football. Plain and simple. Right. So, um, and then to complicate things, what are you going to do when, you know, Boston University, I think, started the original, we may have the fall uh, semester by virtual. What do you do when 65% of the country does, uh, goes back, sends the students back? And then the other 35% keeps the students home. We're not having a, what do you do then? <laughs> so it's going to get complicated. It, it is. And um, the NC2A can't go telling schools what to do academically. Sure. So that's where it's going to get a little complicated. All right. I'm rooting for the Orioles. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, my, what about for, minor league baseball? For the I MLB mean, championship. What about minor league baseball? Some of these places, uh, they don't fill a place up any, like a, like Beehive Stadium. A couple thousand mm -hmm. people will show up. Um, what, can you can you have minor did league you baseball? Guys know yeah. how many? Did you guys know the number of minor league teams? Did you guys know that number you heard about? Do you know how many minor league teams are in baseball? You mean affiliated? <laughs> yes. One hundred sixty. Okay. Well, you probably cheated, but hundred yeah. hundred like forty hundred forty. Yeah. Yeah. I had no idea. That's a lot. Sure. Uh, I don't know what the cuts are going to be, meaning the teams that have folded. I heard. But, but, but you know, minor league baseball is where it starts. And um, What was that, Mike? We didn't hear what you said, Mike. Uh, as far as cutting uh, the minor leagues, I somehow saw 40 last week mentioned a as a figure a you know, yeah, yeah if, i mean if you're talking 160 give or take to to contract 25 percent, that's 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 pretty serious well, i mean a lot of them actually actually playing you can control the amount of people that go into it's not it's not like a restaurant but you can control the amount of people that go into it's like for example beehive stadium it's not as big as a uh as a minor as a do you, know, do you know where I'm going with this? It's a smaller venue. Sure. Could you have minor league baseball maybe? Or with, with a thousand people separated, you know, that kind of stuff? They, you, couldn't do it at, you couldn't do it at Fenway Park. But Right, right, no. right. Well, guys, we're, 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 we're about out of time. I was just notified by Zoom. They have extended us. I'm not sure for how long. Oh. So, well, well, why don't we, we can keep going until we get another warning. How's that? <laughs> so, I think as far as baseball is concerned, I mean, John, you're right. Um, it, like the grocery store model, perhaps. Right. You know? I don't know. And the, the team's being contracted. I'm, I'm a, a lot of them, you know, a lot of these uh, organizations have six minor league teams affiliated, maybe because of the short season teams that they have, like Red Sox have Lowell. I don't know. That might be one of them. You know, a lot of these teams, like I think Atlanta has six or seven, which is a lot. Yeah, I think six well, six is about the average, and yeah. that doesn't count the Arizona Fall League, among other things. Right. You know, Cape Cod League, which just canceled right. their and season. Then, I mean, the Red Sox have Rookie League. Yep. You know, in um, in Florida. Yep. Gulf Coast Rookie League. So you yep. know, you think is single A, double A, triple A, but they had a couple others in there too. Right. John, you went to see the Sox in uh, Greensboro. That's another Greenville, one. They South, Carolina. Yeah. South Carolina. Yeah. Right across the street is Joe Jackson's house. So the Shoeless Joe Jackson's house, a little, a little museum, yeah. The little great. museum, yep. Yep, yep. But the, let's uh, not forget. Eagles, regarding... South Carolina, still lobbying to get him into the Hall of Fame. But he, he, he took 500, I think it was five, he took $5,000 from the gamblers, even though he didn't, he didn't participate in blowing any games. He still took money from the gamblers. That, that did him in forever. Yep. But, yep. <laughs> but let's not forget, the bottom line is, major league teams in some shape or form of course are supporting their minor league teams uh, you know part of the revenue mm -hmm. sharing the the whole is i like to say throw it all in the kettle and uh you know if there's not enough to go around so to speak yeah i i just hope i just hope this is a 
isolated situation where, you know, we're not going to be seeing literally the minor league kind of crumpling as we know it on, on every level, Cape Cod League, uh, Carolina League, whatever league. I just hope this isn't the start of, of uh, the minor league world shrinking. Right, right. It, well, any more, any, any more than the contraction that's being planned, right? Correct. Yeah, yeah. Well, and, you know, and, and the uh, Pawtucket Red Sox are supposed to move to Worcester, but that stadium has stopped con- being constructed. So if and when they played, the question is where, and I don't know. I'm sure Pawtucket would love to have them for another year, unless they sold the land to demolish the stadium. But yeah, it's interesting. You got you kind of got two forces there going, um, you know, against the minor league minor league system for sure. So, well, you know, it's interesting. We'll have to see what happens with all the sports. But uh, you know, the most important thing is is um, you know as, as we as we said in the opening, you know, the people, the the healthcare workers, the folks who are serving us every day, affected by this thing, you know, with their families and and those that that are out of work, obviously, want to get back to work. Sure. You know, I, and I and I'll speak for myself. I'm fortunate. You now I've been I've been working from home for over a month. You know. Yep. Um, Likewise. Yeah. 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 But you can't wait to get in, Mike, right? <laughs> That's another Every- thing. I'm I'm hearing people say things like they don't like working from home. Americans have a <laughs> Americans have a real tendency to go out and do what they want to do. You know, and they just this this working from home may not may not catch on as much as we think it's gonna. I don't know. Well, well I, I know, class I- if. I classify the, the entire working. I, I don't, I, I, I think all of us need to be taken out of the equation because when, when we talk about difference, difference of opinions of people working out of their home, I think it has to be examined on a generational basis. I, I, I mean, all of us have done it in some shape or form. Uh, I, I know younger people in our newsroom, that, you know, you overhear them say, oh, my dream is to, you know, work, uh, work at home five days a week and they're part of a newsroom and kind of an oxymoron because, you know, you have to run a newsroom. You can, how can you not run a newsroom if there's no one there? They're all at home. But yeah. I, I, I really, when I hear all that and hear the arguments for working at home, I really look at it under a microscope and, and just take it by, it's a generational thing. Mm. They're, they're each level, the generation mm. Xers, people like us also, there are different levels on, on the way people feel. Some will be comfortable with it. I, I mean, I've rolled with it, no problem. But yeah, I'm like you, John, I, I, I need to get out. I oh, yeah. in some shape or form need to get out, but yep. when you swing to the far end and you're, you're 23 year old, two years out of college, just would love staying at home. Sure. Yeah. I mean, I've always split it, you know, last six years I split it, you know, two, two days, two days at home, three days in the office or vice versa. So for me to flip it to five days is no big deal, but I'm like you guys, I, I prefer to, to get out, to get out at least a couple of days a week. Yep. Exactly. You know? Yeah. You know, my coworkers are the best. So yep. right, Mike. Yep. Rob's, hey. Rob's hey. just it, it being very coy. He just is going to love watching those 1 p.m. weekday games. And he's going to love being you know, I'll, I'll have one eye on them. But when I'm working or on a, I'm on a call or I'm working, yeah. I really Day-night I can't. Hatter. What's that? Day-night guys, double header? You yeah. Love? Have you guys watched any of these reruns? I love them. I, I think it's amazing. I was watching a game oh. from 1988, Roger Clemens, right? And I, ca- I called up uh, Rob. I go, you got you to see this thing. The, 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 there was nobody. They were, they were all dressed like this in the, in the stands. The, there's about three seconds between the time the catcher throws the ball back to the pitcher and he, and he pitches it again. I mean, it, it, all these little little nuances, it made the game totally. There was no, there was no pitch count you're looking at. It was in 30 years, yeah. it, the game has changed, you know? Last week, last week on NBC, and I tweeted about this, last week on NBC Sports Network, mm-hmm. uh, I got all my work done, and I just had finished dinner at 7 o'clock. They had the 19, I believe it was 1971 Stanley Cup Finals between mm. the Bruins and the Flyers. 
and it was Tim Ryan, Ted Lindsay, Peter Puck. It's when NBC originally did hockey, 3 p.m. start, no advertising on the boards, not one player, maybe, well, goalies had the molded mask, but I don't think, I, I think about 98% of the players didn't wear helmets. No helmets. But, yep. but Bobby Schmatz, Bill Clement with the long Bill Clement. Hair, yep. I, mean, <laughs> I was just in heaven. I, I watched three quarters of that game, and, and it just, it, it, and mm. to see the difference now to where we were, it was just amazing. Yeah. When I first saw these reruns, I go, this is stupid. I, I, I'm loving it. Oh, come on. I, I'm loving it. It's great. <laughs> they have these obscure, you know, last night I was watching, what was it, uh, a University of Southern California was playing Michigan State. <laughs> like, I never saw this game before. But, you know, but, why, don't, why don't I just watch it? I don't know who's going to win. But I don't know about you guys. Here's my one pet peeve, because down here we have Mid-Atlantic Sports Network owned by – Peter Angelos and the Orioles. Of course, they do the Orioles and the Nationals. Um, and then we have uh, the local regional NBC Sports Network. But the one pet peeve about, you know, when you see on the cable guide, it says Orioles Classics. Can you guys actually, and I don't know if like Nesson does this, SNY or, or those guys up there. Can you explain to me how you know, they'll say Orioles classics from 2018. Steven <laughs> Frostberg pitched a game <laughs> with eight strikeouts. Really? It's a classic? A Sunday game on the road in Seattle or something? Well, I, it depends. I, I mean, was it, was it, was, I, I it, was, just, was it a quality start? <laughs> I, I yeah. don't get it. I think I, say I, Jim Palmer in 1971 or something like that. I, I <laughs> don't know classics. And, and, and I'm tired of getting all psyched when you're thumbing around on the remote. You're like, oh, it says an Orioles classic. I will say the other one last two weeks ago, Orioles, I'm ready to say Orioles Phillies 83 World Series mm. with uh, Al Michaels yeah. from Cell on the call. And that was that was great. That that was, but but every time these channels say old oh, classics, I give up on it because it's it's like from two years ago. Well, John's been watching the Mets, right? Yeah, I have. <laughs> yeah, I, I love their announcers, Hernandez and uh, and what's his name? They're, They're very good. Ron Darling excellent. and uh, really Gary are. Cohn and Keith Hernandez are very good. fans. They, there's no bones about it, but they're not. They're not, you know, they don't excuse anybody. These guys suck tonight, you know? <laughs> yeah. They come right out. Yeah, and, they, you know, they, they call it as they see it, you know? They do, and they get hammered in the New York media for I love it, it, too. I love them. <laughs> and, and we'll see if, uh, who, who is it? Is it Jeter? No, it's A-Rod, I think. Isn't A-Rod in on a deal trying to buy the yeah. Mets? Yeah, he and J-Lo are uh, trying to get, get a, a group together and get mm. some capital so mm. they can buy a piece of uh, only in New York. Only in New York. Still my team, but only in New York. You're going back to what John said. There was a game, um, old Red so a Red Sox game in the summertime. You, you can imagine what merchandising is today because 30 years ago, nobody yeah. was wearing a hat or a shirt. Nobody. Nobody. Very few. Like they were going to the beach. Mm -hmm. I guess we, I, that's how we looked. They were dressed like we are. You, you got basic shirts and that was about people it. Dressed like this. Yeah, Fenway know, Park. I couldn't yeah. be, you could find one guy with a Red Sox hat. That's about I it. Couldn't believe it. You know, <laughs> but yeah. back then, back then, you you know, at some point, my dad used to tell me back then, if it was a near pro cap baseball cap, new era, yep. you could only buy it at the stadium. Not even Herman's, if you remember Herman's, Herman's or going way back, yeah. Herb's Sports Shop, wherever. You yep. couldn't buy that there. You, mm. you could only buy it like near the stadium or something. And and I remember growing up, uh, you, you know, there used to be like a pajama top or a t-shirt of of like a Mets Jim McAndrews one I had. I'll never forget this. But but you were never able to get hats or no. And 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 I remember my my dad sent away for it. And this is how my brother used to get back at me besides punching me in the arm with the, with with his with his uh uh with his hand and his knuckle remember those fake batter's helmets that actually hurt yeah. because the plastic studs yeah. were, were holding the helmet to your head oh yeah and all you had to do is hit the person in the head 
lot of pain and everything. I yep. mean, those those you had to send away for. Right. It was all. It was almost all entirely mail order. Yeah. Yep. And, yep. and now, now you know you, you could get Nats Stadium, Nats Park, everyone in red, Philly, everyone in red. St. Louis, it's, uh, mm. it, it's crazy. Yeah, St. Louis, right? Well, John? Cardinals, yeah. You need sunglasses. Everything's bright red. The whole stadium, yeah. But I, I, yeah. I couldn't get over how much different. You're the one that pointed it out, Rob. Yeah. I, said, I, go, I go watch watch how Clemens is pitching. Watch how fast he's pitching. You know, and you're like. Look at the crowd there. There's nobody's wearing nobody's wearing anything but street clothes. <laughs> yeah. All street clothes. That's yeah. back then. That's what people. That that was it. That's sure. so what yeah. you wore. Yep. Exactly. Now you get now somebody will yell at me if I didn't go to Fenway Park with a with a red with a David Ortiz jersey on or something. <laughs> I felt bad. We're, it was raining. We went to a game, John, back in what last April. It was raining. So I was all covered up with no Red Sox at all. I, mm. I felt I felt like generic. Yeah, I'm terrible. You're, you're lucky they let you in. I know. Lucky they let me out. <laughs> well, I'm glad we all got together today uh, to talk about a variety of things. Any cl closing remarks or comments before we end the show? And we'll, when this uh, will be posted on uh, on none of our social media properties, by the way. Final thoughts. I don't know, maybe I'm naive, but I think, I think sometimes <laughs> reality happens faster Expective. than it'll it's be, gonna, uh, I think It'll be nice and maybe, yeah. yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, I was I was gonna say it'll uh, it'll be nice to get out and shake someone's hand again, see some faces, and yeah. uh, you know we'll we'll get to the other side of this yeah. eventually. Uh, you're gonna pump elbows forever. That's it. No <laughs> shaking hands. Yeah. yeah. I can live without shaking hands or hugging, but boy, I'll tell you what, I I I I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing a, a, a stadium full of people again. Well, that, you, you can do away without shaking hands or hugging. I can live without it. Yeah. That put that puts my mind at ease. <laughs> I think sports will be back soon. I think we're going to eat it up. Um, but for a later time, I also, again, think from a business point of view, just like we all discussed about the medical industry, um, I, I think financially and the way we do business uh, on throughout sports, whether it's NFL, MLB, and, and so on, Let's see if some of these owners and teams don't really take a solid hit. And we, I mean, I mean, again, can you imagine no gate for two, three months? That's crazy. That's crazy. So I think also no, as much as we're going to get it back soon, which I do think we will with baseball, um, there, there, the, there, there are going to be some really big long-term effects. And you want to know something? We, we kind of joked around about J-Lo and A-Rod trying to buy the Mets. Let's not see if they're – four or five teams at the end of the year up for sale. Don't count that out. Mm -hmm. Could be. Oh, yeah. Could very well yeah. be. Yep. Mm -hmm. Well, it's uh, also a, a, another case for these long-term cable deals and, you know, teams with their own networks, a lot of money there. And also how many more ways can we deliver the content, you know, as opposed to, having people actually go through the turnstiles. Well, there's a lot of cash in those, those turnstiles. Tough to make. You really there is. There make absolutely that up, you know? is. Yeah. And there's millions, yeah, you of, don't, Americans, you don't, there's millions if, of Americans. They'll say, I'll take my chances. I'm, I'm sick of it. Yeah. I'm sick of hearing about this virus crap. I'm, 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 yeah. I'm done. I'm going to, I want to go back the way it was. If the cure is, is worse than the disease. There's a lot of people thinking that way now. Right. Reality has a funny way of revealing itself. This this could happen faster than we think. Hey, hey, very quickly, you guys ready for baseball on TV next week live? Sure. From South Korea. No kidding. South Korea. ESPN will be getting the rights to uh, uh, baseball from South Korea. And if they play in Taiwan, we're going to see Manny. Uh, he's yeah. He wants now, to really? play. If the if, if people are going to stadiums in South Korea and Taiwan in May, why wouldn't they go to stadiums in, in Boston in August? Well, South Korea has had a much different track record of fighting this thing than we have. They're like the, they're like the number one in the world in fighting it, I think, next to what? Uh, yes. right, but, yes. right, but the bottom line is the virus is gone there. That's why they're doing this. Yeah. When, when, yeah. When, when, when the virus is gone here, if viruses have a, have, a, have a history of vanishing. They do. They already, they already had a good... Uh, Base clearing, uh, base clearing, a uh, bench clearing brawl last week, and uh, 
in in one of the games. It's it's an interesting game, but yeah, ESPN is going to be bringing that on next two weeks live. Nice. Well, this has been fun, Steve. Thanks for joining yeah. us. Thank you, Rob. Mike. Thank you, guys. Right. Corn, as you, always Steve. a pleasure. Be well. Stay healthy, guys. Take care, everybody. Take care. All right. Thank you. Okay.